This is clicker training 101, right? Being with me gives you food. I've just become a popsicle made of meat, Pez dispensing human. Good last. See, now all of a sudden I got her attention. So as soon as I have her interested in at least looking at me, good girl, yes. We're gonna play the yes, no game. Good girl. That's right. So what I'm doing is conditioning her that the only way that the treat is revealed is if she looks me in the face. <coughs> you're not allowed to fight. You're not allowed to oppose. One, two. Buckle my shoe. So she has a conundrum wrapped in an enigma. The reward came from the left hand the last time. And this is her actually going through the process of figuring this out. Yes, good girl. <coughs> you notice how it instantaneously calmed her down. She stopped the jittering. But the problem that most people make is here's the pocket, here's the food. Here's the pocket, here's the food. Here's the pocket, here's the food. What we want to do is be able to execute the reward from any source without having the dog being codependent on the source. Now you notice, I still haven't given her a treat from the right hand. I'm no longer giving auditory cues. And she's debating on whether or not it's worth it for her to try. <coughs> As long as she fixates on the right hand. <coughs> Nothing is forthcoming. Yes! Very good! If you notice that last time we started seeing a little bit of a bend towards the left hand. Hey, Lass. Daisy Duke. Daisy Daisy. Daisy. It never comes from that hand. Here. Good last. Oh! Trying too hard. Yes! Good girl! Nicely done. So basically, and that right there is what you call an extinction burst. What do I do? How do I make this happen? Good girl. So now it comes a little easier, although I don't have her body, I have her head. She's a little bit more inclined to cooperate. Daisy. Yes. Nope. Preventing is part of the process. She can't do what she wants. If she simply cooperates, yes, very nice. It's like I said, at this point, I'm not interested in 100%. I'm just looking for 25. Moving in opposition. Moving in opposition. I'm gonna let her struggle a little bit. And when you see the video, you're gonna see my hands aren't doing a lot of moving, right? And the reason why is because I don't want her contingent upon those and fixating on those as a source. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think I sort of might think I might know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is confusing to me. We may have to default to making some type of a cue because she is a little lost. Yes. Good girl. And then she's volunteering behavior. She's trying to figure out how to get the reward to release. 
That's what the whole lay down thing was. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Good. Yes! Very good. I kind of sort of cued that by moving the leash, but it got her to look. So if you can reward that after that length of time, that's fine too. But ultimately what needs to happen is she needs to understand that that evasive behavior no longer pays. Does that make sense? If you're right here and she's doing this, and you're releasing her to the next thing, she's going, this must be right. So what we're requiring at this point is a lot more aggressive attention development behavior, right? You wanna give it a shot? Yeah. You can actually break these up even smaller. Off. So now you can have gooey crap in your pockets for a change. Ooh, hey, it's freeze dried. Good girl. Okay, and again, don't always deliver from the right hand. And you only really want to try and deliver when she's actually making eye contact, right? So switch. There you go. And pretend like you have something in the right hand. Shorten your release just a little bit. Create enough tension where she has to fight in order to refuse. Spread your arms a little bit further away from your body. There we go. Now, next time she looks at you, mark it and pay her off with the left hand. Don't nag her. It's got to come naturally. I mean, a, a continue applying the pressure, which is different than just giving her leash pops, right? Mm -hmm. We're applying pressure that she has to oppose once she starts giving up the oppositions when we pay it off. Because we're rewarding the absence of fight and attention. Yes! Good girl! Good girl. Very nice. Yeah. Now take her off the table and do it again. Heel. She's a door. <laughs> Camel up. Here. Here. Step to your right or left. I'm sorry. Whatever that is. Good girl. There it is. Attention, or attention on the leash. Here we go. Yes, good girl. Okay, nice job. And basically, you know, and the thing is, though, is, is if you notice what's happened, right, is over the course of the last however many minutes, she's gone from this jittery, oh my God, I don't know what to do, to being a little bit more focused. Mm -hmm. And when she's a little bit more focused, she's a little bit more relaxed, and you're not seeing that same spastic behavior. Here's the drawback. She has to do this stuff anyway. When we're using rewards in order to help encourage specific behaviors, you really need to start fading those rewards almost immediately. The only time we pay off is when we get appropriate response absolutely directly, okay? Mm -hmm. Voluntarily. If we have to compel behavior, out, leave it. We're not rewarding it, okay? I'll mark it, thank you, but I'm not gonna pay it off. So she's gonna end up working harder for less, and dogs are the only animals on the face of the planet that will actually work for a lower paycheck, right? So what we wanna do is what they call using the law of intermittent reinforcement. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pay it off one, two, three, four. Every time, she, every time we compel her to do it right. And then we're gonna hold out and make her make the decision. And then we're going to incentivize only every third, every fifth, and then maybe once every other one, every fifth, every seventh, so on and so forth. So she starts realizing that the harder she works, the faster it comes, okay? And when we're doing the here sit drill, it's important for her to understand, one, when we call you, we always want you to come to us because maybe we just want to pet you and love you. Sometimes we're gonna call you because we're leaving, but 100% of the reason that most dogs fail to recall exercises is because there's always some type of criterion levied with that behavior. What we want to do is 10%, yes, I'm going to do something that you don't like. 90%, I just want to love you and tell you you're a great dog, right? You come, we play. You come, I give you food. You come, I pet you. You come, I tell you you're a wonderful dog. So we take the stress off of them to perform, okay? Does that